Hi, this is Diane Greco Allen. I'm a food relationship coach, and today Diane's flipping her lid. So to, we're going to talk about some of the scans that they do in the hospital. And you may never have heard of this scan. Some of you may have. It's the Technetium 99M Sestamibi scan. Okay, why am I talking about this? One at one time. I was questioning whether or not I should get my parathyroids checked. Parathyroids are behind your thyroid gland. They point backwards, okay? They're like sensors in your neck and your throat, and they can sense calcium levels. They have a lot to do with liver, the bones. They tell if you eat too much calcium or maybe some certain type of, maybe it's too much sodium. They, it, they, Take into consideration all the other mechanisms with anions and cations. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this Sestamibi scan is the Technetium, I hope I have that right, 99 millimeter Sestamibi or MIBI scan, also known as TC Mephi methoxy isobutyl isonitrop. Okay, it's a radio pharmaceutical used to evaluate pathology within the cardiac, breast, and parathyroid tissues. So, Sestamibi is part of the radioactive agent class of medications characterized as, get this, a lipophilic cationic radio tracer. They're tracing the cations, okay? And when you think about cations, you wanna think about anions and cations, the positives and the negatives. They all have to have partners, okay? And if they don't have their partner, they can't function right. When you think of sodium chloride, and you think of magnesium and calcium, and you think of phosphorus and some of these other beautiful things that electrolytes and minerals, that need to be in balance in the body. Well, this little guy in here is always using their little detectors to figure out what's going on with you and what you're putting in your mouth, what you can tolerate and what you can't, okay? So, um, this activity illustrates the indications, mechanism of action, contraindications, okay, get ready for a system to be as a valuable diagnostic agent. Now, I went to at least five or six endocrinologists all over the tri-state area and even in, uh, down in Florida. So I did some virtual counseling through Florida to see if there was a possibility that I could be someone who was, um, you know, able to get a system maybe scan and, and actually have parathyroid surgery. What I learned about parathyroid surgery is, in most instances, if you have all your parathyroids taken out at one time, you will definitely go into calcium shock, okay? These things are sensors to help regulate and evaluate what is going on with these minerals and electrolytes, especially calcium. So, if you take those out, and then you start inundating the body, which they do, they automatically start putting you on replacements with calcium. But what they don't take into consideration is you're taking supplements to supplement your calcium, but there are calcium things in your food. There's calcium almost everywhere. I want you to go to your cupboard, go to your refrigerator, start looking for your products that have calcium on it because there are, there's calcium in meat that because of the bone. There, there's, there's calcium everywhere. There's phosphorus. There's all kinds of things that are in our foods already. And sometimes we're overdoing it. And then when, they extra, when you're over supplementing, you actually go bonkers from over supplementing. And then it causes bone demineralization. Sounds like it should support the bone, right? But what happens is it starts pulling from the bone and then you're going into these cycles of 
too much calcium or lack of magnesium or whatever the issue is that you're dealing with. And sometimes it's just because we are consuming way too much calcium, a lot of dairy, a lot of meats, a lot of things that have excess amounts of calcium. And then your natural resources for calcium are your veg vegetables, your, some of your nut products. So just think about what's happening there. Now I'm gonna go into the adverse effects of a Sestamibi scan, okay? Uh, allergies can range from mild pruritic maculo papular rashes to angioedema. Okay, what's edema? It's swelling and anaphylaxis. So we're talking about uh, your body's response to too much of something, okay? So these can happen, these are allergic reactions in the body. The body normally reacts in a, to anything that comes into the body that shouldn't be there or is in excess. It's going to react as a swelling mechanism because all of the antibodies, I mean, all the antibodies, all the white blood cells, if there's an infection, they go to that place, okay? And there's a swelling reaction. What you wanna do to reduce that swelling is to reduce the foods that are causing the inflammation. Now, there are a lot of people having issues with histamines. Histamines can also be another part of, believe it or not, some of the foods that we rely on every day, and some of those are the nightshades. So there's a list of histamine foods that you need to be aware of, but also know that some of these tests, um, now I'm gonna read this a, a few things. Um, so what, what they do in the hospital is if you have a reaction to, uh, like say you have an allergic reaction to something that they just gave you, a dye or whatever, guess what they do? They give you prophylactic corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are produced in our body, they're natural. But if your body is unable to produce corticosteroids, we might be looking at an adrenal problem. And maybe you're having an adrenal problem because you're not helping that pancreas to produce and to be functional and to have the cells available to produce digestive enzymes and insulin. So those are two. Insulin, of course, is a hormone. Uh, the cortisol that we have in our body and other adrenocortical steroids and things that are occurring, ADH and all these things from your pituitary, your hypothalamus, all these connections, they're going to all different places in your body, all right? Now, sometimes, there's some hormone imbalances for other reasons, but most of the time, it's because of what we are doing and what we're eating. Those are the ones that you are tangibly uh, responsible for with your five points of awareness and your five Ws. Now, are we all human? Yes. Sometimes we need some help to understand where we're having these issues and what's causing it. Now, there are some some things that we're uh, exposed to that are immune burdens. One of the biggest immune burdens that sometimes people are dealing with and they may not know is mold. And mold can be a weight on your immune system that can drag you down. Same as uh, the Epstein-Barr virus, some of the herpes viruses, which also can be STDs, STIs, other infections, those things can weigh you down. So unfortunately, they can also, when they get out of control, can affect your brain. So let's take back, go pull ourselves back, five points, both hands. You have some control of this, but just be aware that some of these tests that they do, people have allergies, to for a reason, and then sometimes they're, they're injecting you with more steroids and causing maybe some additional issues. Is it okay occasionally to have a little Band-Aid with some of that stuff? Very occasionally, I say. If you do it too many times, 
it's not going to be beneficial for you. You're just following in a bad habit of just using band-aids all over your body and then the underlying factors are blunted health and wellness. Diane Grecoala, Food Relationship Coach, Sestamibi Scan. This is for parathyroid, cardiac, and I believe they said chest. Let's go back to that because uh, that is something that I believe everybody should, um, you know, if you've ever had it, lipophilic cationic radio tracer. If you've ever had it, there's a good reason why you may be dealing with some of those other issues related to calcium ions. Dying Greco Allen. Bye.